So this is kind of cool. My new poxy grip showed up. And they're now in plastic bottles, which are super handy. I like these way, way better than the old tin pint bottles they came in. This is, this is way nicer. So that's something new. Uh, we've got the vast majority of our wide planks all ripped down into two inches. Um, this pile over here of two inch planks, there's two here. Uh, this pile here has three in it. This pile has three in it. Those were all my scraps and that extra piece of plank that I had sitting over here. It's about four inches wide, a little over four inches. So this, all of these little two inches here are all extra. Um, then we've got this plank back here all cut into two inches. Tonight we mixed up some poxy grip and uh, I'm gluing on the last cover board as you can see down that side of the boat. Pretty much got every single clamp that I own on it. Um, same thing. One screw up here on the end, long pivot point with a come along down to batteries to bend that cover board, get it to curve nice and tight, no gap. So that's where we are. Clamps everywhere. Look at those things. Well, I got real lucky on this one. I came out to check the uh, cover board, the last cover board, one more time before I went to bed tonight and it had ripped the screw out that I'm using on this long lever to bend that uh, cover board. It ripped the screw out and this board, my come along and everything was laying on the ground. And fortunately enough, the glue, the uh, epoxy was still soft. I mean, it, I only put it on an hour ago or so. Um, was soft enough that I, I moved it Put the same screw in but then i added like a two inch long screw that goes much 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 deeper into the the transom here um and then i started cranking down on that come along again and anyhow long story short it was soft enough that it pulled back into place had i not just by i don't know uh sheer worry come out and checked on this cover board one more time there's a very likely t chance that in the morning I would have come out, that cover board would have been peeled up on the end, completely cured with a big gap back here, and there would have been nothing I could have done to fix it. <laughs> it would have wrecked the boat. It would have totally ruined the look. Um, so fortunately, me being constantly nervous and checking and rechecking and rechecking uh, paid off in this particular instance, so... Uh, redid the screw again, added a screw that's much longer, gets way better bite into the transom, retensioned it down, everything's back to golden again. But boy, we dodged a bullet on that one. So, tonight we got all the clamps pulled off of this last cover board, it's officially glued down, uh, turned out really nice. And today we've got the center king plank. Uh, currently gluing up. I made another dozen of these blocks, the little screw blocks. So uh, there it is. And up at the tip, the bow, I put one in each each corner. You know, and it, this this piece here is actually spanning from the cover board to the king plank, and basically it's just setting the height of that so the outside edges are are dead on. In the middle, what I did was I cut a couple of little blocks. I put them just inside of my glue line. There you can see it a little bit better. Just inside. And then I set a 2x4 on it that was, let me get way, way back here. Anyhow, I put this 2x4, I cut a specific length. It's rammed up into the bottom of one of my rafter beams and it's a hair bit longer than it is from, from the face of this to the face of the rafter. So I put it in at an angle, stuck it right on top of those blocks and then I used a soft mallet and started beating it up straight hammering the top of that thing down the top of the uh, rafter. And as you beat it in there, it starts to apply more and more and more pressure as it gets close to vertical. So that's what I'm using to hold the center down here and the center down here to keep that crown. So just using basically a two by four off of a rafter, uh, beat in tight to wedge it in place. So that's where we're at. Let this cure up now. So the, uh, King planks are complete. It's all glued down. The bow king plank, 
the bridge deck king plank and then the rear deck king plank they're all glued down now all the clamps are off as you can see i, I started laying out my deck pattern uh, again using the whole uh, book matched piece basically um, these two and these three were all part of the same same plank and as i ripped them into two inch strips i set them on here according to how they came off of the saw so it's book matched from side to side um it looks like we're gonna have enough material to completely do the deck um i just got them sitting up here for right now uh basically if you can imagine all of these planks will be cut off across here and then they'll all get slid down to cover the bridge deck and the rear half so should have enough to do the entire deck. I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, they're all numbered, starting over here in the corner. There's one, two, three, come on, focus, camera, four, five, and so on, all the way around. So what I'm going to do now is I'll get these slid off to one side and starting from the center, work my way out each side. So, you know, I think one night I'll glue these two, the next night I'll glue the next two, the following night the following two. And as I'm going along, I'll get them cut off and slid back onto the next section. Um, so that's where we're at now. Making good progress. Here's a quick look at that joint. Turned out really nice. Get that under some uh, epoxy and some varnish and or clear coat. Whichever way I decide to go, it's going to turn out beautiful. We'll get back here and kind of look at it. You can see the colors of the deck and... And I chose specific grains in specific places. So anyhow, making good progress. So here are the very first two two-inch planks. Um, I used not these, but I made little quarter-inch spacers. And I stuck one at the very end, one on the inside, one in the middle, and one clear out at the other end. And uh, basically applied all my epoxy on there. Slid it up tight and then slid it all the way down tight until it butted into this one and that sets my gap all the way around it. Um, I started putting, these are half inch screws with uh, fender washers. The half inch screws would just about poke out of the bottom, um, but with the fender washer on it, they don't. So I'm going to use, again, the fender washers in between seams just like this so that there's no screw holes in the boat. But anyhow, two planks down. And a whole lot more to go. Well, we now have eight planks down. I've been doing two a night. So this was the first night. The next ones were the second night, third night, fourth night, so on and so forth. I can do two of the bow planks per night. Um, I guess if I made more screw blocks, I could do the rear half. But um, I'll just keep doing two planks a night up here in the bow. Once I finish the bow area... Again, I'll move to the rear of the boat, and then I can do four planks a night. One on each side of the bridge deck, and then one on each side of the, uh, I guess we'd call it rear deck. So anyhow, once I finish with the bow area, I've got plenty enough of these clamps and screws to do four planks a night back there. So that'll go a lot faster than, than the front end, but it's looking beautiful. Here's a look at my little spacers that I'm using. This is just some of that uh, quarter inch or six mil ply. And uh, I'll set that end down there. I'll set this end over here, bump it into it and over into my two spacers. Then go down to that end, set that end with a clamp, then come in the middle and set the middle with one of the screw blocks, pushed up tight against it to maintain that gap. And I just keep moving this down as I'm doing each block if I need to push or pull that plank. And I've had to move each one just a little bit to keep the uh, the line's just nice and straight, but looking very, very good. Making good progress. So, as a rule, what seemed to work really well for me is for every 8 inch wide by 20 inch long length, it takes roughly an ounce of epoxy to glue down. So, 8 inch by 20 inch, 1 ounce of epoxy. And I'm using that same, that same formula as I'm figuring out how much epoxy I need for each plank. So basically, so far, each pair of planks has taken me one and a half ounces of epoxy to glue down. 
um, as I get out here towards the shorter ones, it'll take less and less and less. But I'm still using that same formula of one ounce per eight inch by 20 inch piece. Coming right along. Well, today we just glued on the 13th and 14th deck plank up here in the bow. Uh, it's turning out really, really nice. Looking really good. Uh, same, same old formula, two a night. Um, and we have three planks left to go per side. And the bow half of the deck is done as far as all the planking being glued down. So three more nights I'll be done with the bow and moving on to the bridge and the rear deck. Um, so here's my gap that follows. You can see where my, my little joint is right here. And my gap that follows this around. I've done my best to keep these planks sanded to a very, very slight uh, curve to match all of this. But it's not perfect. You know, there's a little bit of inconsistency. And it's, it's hard to tell when you get the white stripes in there, the white filler, you, you'll be able to tell. So what I'm going to do is after I get all these glued down, um, I've got my little spacer block here. And you can see it, it uh, fits really well here, really well there, really well there. Um, right here, it's a little tight. It fits, but it's a little tight. So what I'm going to do is make a probably eighth inch aluminum uh, inch tall or so by 12 inch long, basically a, a tiny little long board that I can slip down inside of there and then sand all of those smooth so that any of them that, that aren't quite perfectly in line with this outside, I'll just sand with that, uh, that skinny long board on edge to make sure they're perfectly smooth and match this outside curve. So that's what I'm working on. Three more nights we'll be uh, done with the bow. Of course, now after all this gets glued down, um, you know, I'm gonna have to take my long board and a piece of ply and start bending ply over the top of this and looking for any waves or bumps or lumps or, and then I'll have to longboard sand all of this so it's perfectly smooth and uniform. But I'll worry about that after I get all of the bow planks glued, all of the bridge deck glued, all of the rear deck glued. I'll probably go ahead and fair this outside edge off, which is still hanging over a little bit. Come on, focus. Doesn't want to focus very well. There it is. So I'll probably fair all of that off um, all the way around the outside of the boat. Focus. There we go. Anyhow, I'll fair all of that off, uh, get all of the planks glued down, and then I'll come back and I'll seam sand all of the ends of my planks so that they're dead on perfect. And then I'll longboard the entire top of the deck. And once I'm satisfied with it being nice and smooth in both directions, left, right, forward, and back, then we'll start applying the epoxy coats on it. But making good progress. So we have the last two planks gluing up for the bow. This little guy here. And this little guy over here. So the bow is officially done as far as planking glued down. Um, you know, boats are funny. Um, things aren't always 100% dead even or work out just flawlessly like you hoped. But you know you're doing something right. Here's my pattern uh, for this outside plank here. So this pattern is uh, starboard. You know you're doing something right when you use the exact same pattern for your port. Holy crap, something is identical. It's amazing. So anyhow, that's where we are for tonight. Let this cure up, pull all the little clamping screw and, and fender washers out, and then we'll start on the rear half. Been good progress. So what we're looking at here is, uh, these are four of the two inch planks that I glued together on edge and then sanded them down. Uh, I took a whole lot of time to line up the grains to make the seams as hidden as possible. Uh, I'm pretty proud of it. If we flip it over, you'll be able to see the seams a little better. This is the bottom side. There you can probably see the four seams a lot easier. This is the surface, and I did my absolute best to make sure that they're, they're all lined up and looks like one piece. So this will actually go, this is this piece right here, this fill-in piece. So it'll get set on there, you know, roughly something like that. Um, something like that. And then uh, cut to, to shape. So 
this is exactly what I did on the other side, and we can take a look at the other side here. This is back at the transom, and here's that piece, little filler piece right here. I did my vest again to make sure that this seam lined up. Now these look like seams. These are actually dark spots in the grain. If we come and look at this end, you can see that the, uh, the grain you know, splits at like a 30 degree angle. It's not perfectly perpendicular. Uh, here is actually a seam. You can see it's straight up and down. So it looks like a seam here and here. It is not. That's just part of the dark, dark uh, lines in the grain. But I did my best to hide the seams. There's an actual seam. Uh, there's a seam right here. You can see a slightly different shade. But once it's under epoxy, um, it, sh it should look pretty darn good. So that's what I'm working on tonight. Um, getting ready to start fitting and gluing this piece down. Making good progress. So here's a look at that same piece the next day. After I got it glued down, pulled all my clamping blocks off of it. It's right on my line, my quarter inch line, just like I wanted it. Um, it's hard to tell, but the, the seam is right in through here. You can barely see the seam right there. But I tried really hard to color match it so that it would make it difficult to see, make it look like it was all one piece. Um, so anyhow, that's where we are. I still need to finish seam sanding this a little bit, but I'll worry about that after I get the whole thing planked. So there's a before and after, making good progress. Well, it's officially November 2017. For the month of October 2017, we went up 39 and 3 quarters hours. So great hours this month. That's my third highest ever. Uh, the only two higher than that were also this year for June at 40 and a quarter and May at 45 and a quarter. So great hours. Uh, we went up $18.14. Again, I love months like this where I can put in great hours and not spend a lot doing it. So 37 and three quarters of those hours went into the deck. So that brings us up to 86.75 hours in the deck. The remaining two hours went into fairing. So that brings us up to 35 and a half hours into fairing. So the total 39 and three quarters hours, that brings us up to 852 hours total into the zip. I missed that mark, damn it. And the $18.14 brings us up to $9,253.43 invested in the zip. So let's take a look at where we're at. So here is where we are. Um, all of the deck planks on the bow are glued down officially. You can see that these two are a darker color than the rest of them. Same with the, the, the other position. Two on that side, they're dark as well. And these are the surface planks that I, I ripped from the little spare plank I had sitting over here. So, yes, they are darker. It's only dark for the top few mills of the surface because they were exposed to sunlight. Uh, mahogany darkens quite a bit in the sunlight. So when I sand all of this, they should lighten up just like this one beside it. The back sides of these are the undersides are every bit as light as this color. So yes, they're temporarily darker. They won't be when I get them all sanded. So bow deck's done. Now we're on to the bridge deck and we are 16 planks in on the bridge and, and rear deck. Um, turning out really, really good. So I'm officially now out of my quart of poxy grip. I ran out. Keep in mind that poxy grip, that quart kit went a, a long ways. I was able to glue that cover board from the transom all the way up to the dash, glue that cover board down, glue this king plank on the bow down, this king plank here, and that king plank, all of the bow planking, and all of the bridge and rear deck planking, as well as my little filler pieces here. I was able to do all of that off of one quart kit. I think I probably need around six to seven ounces of epoxy to finish the planks. So I'm gonna have to order one more quart kit. Uh, the rear pieces here, you can see the, they don't line up perfectly. This is an overhang, this plank, and this is an overhang. So they need to be sanded flush on both sides. 
this overhangs here as well so it needs to be sanded flush but uh, we're making great progress uh, something else I've done this month I started sanding the over overhang which was the quarter inch sub deck which overhung a quarter inch and then the quarter inch mahogany which overhung a quarter inch beyond that so you know this mahogany was about half inch wider than the hull all the way around I was using that for a clamping surface uh, I started fairing that off with my plane so at the moment I am from the transom we'll come forward here all the way up to right about here it's about an eighth inch overhang still on both sides so I stopped about this point uh, and the reason I stopped is because I need to pull off my stainless cut water so I can continue fairing all the way around the tip uh, so basically from this point back we're about 90% done on both sides. Now I left this corner, this edge, pretty damn sharp. I haven't sanded it smooth or any of that or rounded it over for a specific reason. When I'm done, when this is all sanded and I'm, I'm confident it's sanded flush, I'm going to use this sharp edge to stand back and eyeball it to make sure this is a really fair, smooth curve. Your eye picks up deviations in a thin line really really easy whereas if I were to round this over it would be harder to tell if it were fair or not so my plan is to leave this sharp edge fully sand and bevel all the way around the outside of the shear line for both sides and then step back and look at it and if there's a little wave go there and you know do a little touch up sanding and step back and look at it again because your eye picks up deviations in a small thin line like that really easy once I'm confident that it's a nice smooth fair curve I've sanded it and everything looks great at a hundred different angles then I'll come back by hand and I'll ease this corner over so it's not a sharp sharp edge and by sharp I'm not joking that cut on my palm there that is from this edge I ran my hand down it and drew blood so <laughs> mahogany apparently can be used as a weapon as well so uh, got to order more epoxy grip when I do finish gluing down these rear planks when it shows up uh, here's a look across across the uh, the dash I cut all of these mahogany planks longer than the dash and I, I reached underneath drew my line took it off and cut it cut it long but I didn't pay attention to how long I cut them I just wanted to be longer than I needed so I need to come back now and sand all of the ends of these planks to flush with the marine ply that's below it. So I've got to do that on this dash. Also, the ply that the, come on focus, there we go. The ply that the mahogany cover board is glued down to, you can see is hanging over. So I need to sand this ply back to this mahogany line, all the way back. On both sides of the front cockpit, and both sides of the rear cockpit same thing uh, when I finish planking the bridge deck and the rear deck I will then sand this overhang I'll sand this back to match the same angle as that seat back the 12 degrees all the way across does no good to do it now until I get the rest of the planks glued down so basically I need to sand flush the interior edge all the way around on both cockpits I have to do the same thing in the motor well same story with it. I let them overhang about an eighth of an inch, sixteenth of an inch. So they all need to be sanded flush to the ply. And on the sides of the transom, same thing. This quarter inch is sticking out beyond the, the wall of the motor well, about a sixteenth, and about a sixteenth here as well. So this all needs sanded flush too. But that's where I'm at. Um, again, it's going to take about six to seven ounces of epoxy to finish gluing these down. After I get them all glued down um, get the interior edge of both cockpit sanded flush get the outside shear sanded flush all the way around I'll come in with my skinny longboard on edge and I'll sand all the ends of these planks to make sure that this is a perfect uniform gap all the way down I'll have to do that here on both sides to the tips of each one of these two inch planks I'll have to do it right here. I'll have to skinny longboard that one and I'll have to skinny longboard 
this seam, and I, I call that seam sanding. I'm sure it probably has, I don't know, some sort of official word, but anyhow, so I'll have to seam sand down around this corner and here you can see where the planks will end same gap so this white seam will start right here and it will run down here and then behind the planks I think it's gonna look really good so anyhow that's where I'm at get everything surface sanded uh, and then we'll start start epoxy coating uh, making fan damtastic progress it is it is really looking nice let's step back and see what kind of a look I can get. Man, that thing, it's gonna be pretty. And again, th these dark planks here, ignore those. When they're sanded up, they should be the same color as the rest of them. But uh, thank you for watching. Please rate and comment. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And we'll catch you on the next update of Building the Zip.